Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Elon Paul's No Man's Sky. Episode, gosh, what are we on now? 12, I guess? Um, so what we're going to do today is we're actually going to pick up on the storyline. Um, so we're going to go and rather than doing uh, uh, base upgrades and stuff like that, we're going to pick up the main storyline, take it a little further, and the next episode I'll go ahead and do some more base upgrades and stuff like that. Now, as you might have saw in one of my bonus episodes, I went ahead and did some upgrades to the ship finally. So, got a little tired of it. I went ahead and I, you'll see I have a little extra credits. I did a lot of storm crystal harvesting and stuff like that. Sold a lot. Of, so, I was able to get that up to a good snuff. I've opened this up to the maximum area without having to scroll up and down. And the same thing for this. So, I, I don't have to scroll up and down here. This is all I got. So, I got about 30 storage. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, 30 storage augmentations is what I ended up having to do. It was a lot of ships to scrap out, um, but I, this is what I ended up with. I've spent some nanites, and I've gained some nanites. So I have a little extra nanites, but I don't have a lot in that area because I spent some on some upgrades for the ship uh, and getting things going in that area. So we're good there. My exosuit is ready to go because it's in the same exact state. So as we, and granted, I can scroll a little further down because I'm getting upgrades from space stations, but uh, I'm not quite there yet. Once once it drops down one level, I'll probably start putting everything in there. Um, so that's where we are right now. Again, nothing special. I didn't go crazy with it. I did add an upgrade to my uh, weapons, so... <laughs> A uh, little OP there, 43,000 and 28,000 damage. It's absolutely incredible. Um, my hyperdrive is still upgraded. I found there's a very interesting thing in the grouping of the pulse engine, that putting it in this kind of arrangement and putting your sail one down and one over, adjacent that is, from your main pulse engine, gives it more support as far as maneuverability is concerned. Shields, putting them in a grouping, you notice my shield strength is 287.6, my shield is all the way on the left. A lot of people say to put them like this. Uh, hang on. Yeah, I just did that completely wrong. Put them like that. But you notice my shield strength is 285.6. 288.5. That actually works out a little better if I put it like that. So depending upon the arrangement of these is, is better for... These work in conjunction with each other. If I put it next to the shields, it actually lowers my shield strength. I'm going to leave it like this. Um, I may make some changes in regards to moving things around. For instance, I want to be able to upgrade my hyperdrive as time goes by. So the hyperdrive needs to have access to uh, more slots, if you will. So, And I can get one more upgrade for my weapons. So I can put that up here. Again, it's an A-class ship, so I can't go too, too much further. But I'm going to go ahead and rearrange things real quick here. Just get things moved over, because obviously we've got five slots right there that we can put things in. And if I can arrange these over here in the same configuration, just backwards. And then you go there, and you go there. You see my maneuverability didn't change. I'm going to move this up here. I'm going to put my shields up here there it is 288.5 and that way it leaves a little more room to get some stuff done if i can move this over here again and now i can move and it's a lot of this is you know do what you can i've got to leave these spots available because I'm, I'm actually boosting my hyperdrive a little bit over here so let's move everything over There we go. That gives my hyperdrive plenty of room to grow. These guys don't build on each other. Put them anywhere you want. See? Isn't that nice? I can put them anywhere. So, again, my shield will grow by one, so I'm going to go ahead and put these down here. This will probably grow by one more as well at some point. Um, no, maybe not. I think we're at maximum right now. So, that'll be fine. So, we should be good. Should be good to go. And my hyperdrive can now grow in this direction. So I can put a couple extra hyperdrive upgrades in here. Um, I got the extra glass there because I wanted to... And I don't have that ability yet to build that. But we'll get to that later. Um, do we have... Yes, we have salvage data. Okay, let's get on with the regular storyline, like I said. Uh, so where did we leave off in our log? Let's find out. Uh, so we're going to do these later. 
uh, let's see here. We're going to go on the main leap. Okay, so if I trace energy, okay, so that was the icon we saw with the Atlas symbol on it. And I believe it's on another planet right now. There it is. And there's my nice little freighter. Guri 5. I probably can name the planets in my system one of these days. If I'm not mistaken, yep, it gives me the ability to rename the planets if I want, or the entire system as, I will, as, as the case may be. And it was discovered a month ago by me. It doesn't seem like anybody else has been there. There we go. Nothing special. And it gets uploaded automatically. Now, if it gets accepted, that means somebody will come back through one day and discover the system. It'll be renamed. Instead of the old name, it'll show Lon Paul's story system. So, if I want to do that. Now I can name it anything I want. I can name the planets if I want to as well. I know that there's a system out there named uh, Bob. Of course, you got to have a planet named Bob. Just because. And it's not because of Survival Bob or anything else like that, but I think it's more along the lines of uh, Titan AE is what I was thinking of. Planet Bob. You don't see me gesturing. Planet Bob. So anyway, here we go. We're tracing the subline. Let me see. Reveal hidden sentinel ley lines. Follow the sentinel energy trace to its signature. It's approximate location. You know what we got to do. Come in a little bit early, a little bit sooner. Slow it down just a little bit. And then scan. And look at that. It happens to be right next to what appears to be a building, so I have a funny feeling that's where we're headed. This should be, there we go, a landing pad. Ooh, looks like we got friendlies. Um, nope, it's apparently over this way, 300 clicks. What's over there? I don't even see any buildings over there. So, let's head that direction, I guess, and see what's out there. Hey, let's grab some sodium while we're here. I predict sentinel battles in our future. Okay. There's something over this way, apparently. I'm just curious. I literally see nothing over there except a cargo drop. Oh, okay. That's right. Now, just to play it safe. You never know. Viking Black. Let's see what I have to say. Blah, 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 blah. Not even going to try. I don't know what to expect as I approach the structure. An army of sentinels, perhaps? Some gateway through which I'll find Artemis? But in the shifting structure of this monolith, I can feel something else. A story. A vision. It is already burning itself into my eyes. Let's activate it. The Traveler Arrival. The Traveler awoke beneath the shadow of a red star. Through the lonely cosmos they fled, yearning for purpose and meeting. They found an anomaly, an aberration, a door to the heavens. No Gek, no Viking, no Corvax could see it. Only the Traveler could perceive the portal, though they did not know how to step through. They did not know the secret language, the glyphs. They did not yet grasp the price of the final truth. Witness the glyphs. I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient Traveler. I see glyphs in my mind part of the code I need to activate a portal. That gives you a hint we're going to have to do this again. A couple times. As I depart, I spot a sentinel drone in the distance. It moves away quickly. Let's see what happens. Level 1. Looks like we got some sentinels arriving. Now, we can fight them or run. I'll take them out real quick. Sorry, buddies. Now, level two can continue. We could go through the entire battle if we want. 
But you know what? You guys have seen me fight the Sentinels before. I'm going to continue on. I love a good Sentinel battle. Don't don't worry about it. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Oh, they're alerted to my presence as well. Great. We may not have a choice here. Let's go ahead and steal something from in here. And as we're indoors as well, we'll grab some stuff. And see if we can decrypt this uh, chamber in here and get an extra technology. So this is a way, not, it's not cheating, mind you. This is a way to get extra technology if you can figure out the puzzle. Unfortunately, you have to figure out the language too. I approach the terminal and search for a way to override the alarm. I find a likely looking button and press it, causing the terminal to respond. Let's see what it has to say. Gra by Keen. Yeah, that's all I can make out. And it tells me that something's going on now. Hopefully we can figure this out. Here's the hint. A flap flicks open and a microphone emerges. A distant voice shouts Gra. So it wants to say something. Now, do we want to apologize? Of course not. That's not what the guy Keen are like. Do you want to say, eh, everything's fine? This isn't Star Wars. I'm not Han Solo. Bark, gra. I bark aggressively at the terminal. This appears to satisfy whatever demand was being made of me. Access is granted. <laughs> Normal operations have resumed and I have access to the facility's main control panel. I should be able to alter production to my own benefit. Now I can get nanites out of this, which you'll get about 100, 150 nanites. Create a multi-tool expansion slot. We know we could use one of those, or we can learn a new recipe. Now, the recipe, it will just be one recipe. I can get those anytime I want. I'm not going to worry about that. But the multi-tool expansion slots, man, I could really, really use one right about now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Machinery Wars as a factor creates an expansion circuit perfect for use as a multi-tool upgrade unit on the space station. And there we go. We get one slot out of it. Our standing increases with the Viking. And it appears in our inventory. There you go. So, not bad. And as you know, like I said, my multi-tool, it's got some slots in here, but I really could, I need to expand this, because there's other things I would like to be able to to build at some point or another. Um, I do need to find base salt one of these days, and maybe we'll do that on a further episode. So these guys can't see me. And if I exit the facility, they should no longer be able to track me. They're not going to follow me. They're not going to try to do anything with me at all. Uh, probably the accomplishment of killing some sentinels off. Oh, no. Learning words. Yes. Okay. So unless this is an aggressive sentinel planet, they're not going to care to even look at you. So let's just move on. Waypoint received. Scan. We're going to scan to determine where the next ley line is located. Tracing to source. It's over this way. Now, as you know, in one of my battles, I ended up, if you look at my top left corner, I found a sentinel pillar. So I could go there, acquire technology, shut down all the sentinels in this system. Well, on the planet that I'm on anyway. But I'm not going to do that. So I need the second set of glyphs at this point. I probably should have bumped out to space and came back down again. But, eh, you know, now it's 13 seconds. So, you know, whatever. All right. Uh, let's see. There's my source, which is there. We do have a... Looks like an abandoned place right nearby. So you run across these places here on occasion when you're out and about. Especially when you're done with the main storyline. You can get to these places and they will have words for you that you can learn. Uh, they will also give you knowledge that you can find expensive things out in there. But hit the knowledge stones while you're here. These particular units always have two. One, two. Okay, so we'll grab those, and then we'll hit the main hub here, the pillar. Blah, 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 internet. I don't know what it said. I'm sorry. I got past it too quickly. As I approach the structure, I feel that same burning sensation in my eyes. There is nothing to read, and yet I am more aware of these words than anything I've ever known. Activate. The Traveler. Sin. Made a mistake, I guess. The Traveler found a way. They always did. The first drone screamed when it was cut open. 
Within the shattered memories of Sentinels, the Traveler found the glyphs they needed. They passed through the gateway, emerging before the face of Omnipotence. Now, we're talking about a specific Traveler here, so you're learning the history of a specific Traveler. Remember I said that. The Traveler asked the Atlas how many worlds were left to visit. Here's the importance of it all. Here you're going to learn a big secret, folks. They have see had seen so many in their life, they did not wish to die before they saw them all. And the Atlas answered. Eighteen quintillion, four hundred forty-six quadrillion, seven hundred forty-four billion, seventy-three million, seven hundred nine thousand. Nope, I'm still off. Eighteen septillion... 446 quintillion, 744 quadrillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 551,616 planets. More than can be seen in any lifetime. It was impossible to explore the universe before the Traveler died. Now, you're looking at that number, you're thinking they just threw a bunch of numbers on there. That is actually as accurate as they could get in this game. That is literally how many planets there are that you could land on. And if you landed on each planet and took off again, just landed, jumped out, jumped back in and took off again and went to the next planet, it would literally take you well over a thousand years. Real time, human life to reach every planet. So you're thinking to yourself, great, I'm playing a game that has no end. Honestly, you got to remember too, there are millions of people playing this game around the world millions of people it's a heck of a community everybody's sharing knowledge everybody's sharing the information they find so when you think to yourself i couldn't possibly spend more than say 50 hours or 100 hours playing this game you could literally spend thousands upon thousands of hours playing this game and always find something a very just every now and then you find something different you've seen some of the screenshots i've taken some of my um uh, thumbnails that i've taken as well that i use for them i'm always finding something beautiful in this game to look at so i hope you enjoy this as i do so we're going to witness the glyphs i am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler i see the glyphs in my mind another piece of code again we're talking about a specific traveler here that we're witnessing these glyphs from keep that in mind i think of the atlas i've encountered this name many times in my travels yet its true nature still eludes me the vision fills me with fear who is the atlas we got to locate the final glyph set. You notice I'm not being attacked by anything this time. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. Off we go. Oh, we're not going to go far. Not going to go far. Got to hit the C button. Ley line found. Next source. I guess it wasn't that far away. Glad I didn't go far. Ah, another pillar. Well, ancient structure, if you will. Okie dokie. Let's learn the, learn the words while you're here. Always try to get... If you're wandering around a planet and you see these knowledge stones, grab them. Because you're going to need them down the road. Apparently, in order to open up your computer archives, you got to learn as many words as you can anyway. So, just keep learning words. doesn't make a difference which species. By Keen Monolith. Can't understand any of those words. Everything here is tinted with that same red. The same unobservable crimson that fills my vision when I blink. I can only hope this structure holds the final glyphs, that my trial at these ruins is nearly over. The Traveler, a purpose. The Atlas told the Traveler they were the first of their kind, that a multitude would follow. Each would be endowed with the same noble soul, each able to travel from planet to planet in eternal solitude. So, a lonely existence as a Traveler. But, you're, t you're, you're speaking to or learning about the very first traveler that came through. The first traveler rejected the gift of the Atlas. This was not what they hoped for. What was the purpose of infinity if you could not see it all, if you were alone, if you would one day die? 
The first traveler cursed the Atlas and claimed that they would find a way to survive no matter the cost. All of these worlds, all of time itself, it would be for the travelers to witness. Witness the glyphs? I am filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler. I see the final glyphs in my mind, the final portion of the code. Here we go, folks. We're going to have a little bit of fun now. We're going to go and activate a portal now and actually travel someplace. Here we go. We hit the C button. Go wait for it to appear. There it goes. 23 minutes. We will take a shortcut. Okay, here we go. Off we go. It's probably going to be in the dark. No? Okay, still got some daylight. So if you've never seen a portal before, you're about to witness one. They're pretty cool. They remind me of a particular um, movie and slash TV show. Go to the side that it's pointing to, by the way, because I know this it's a two-ended facility here, but that side is the side you want to go to. Any planet you develop your main base on, it's always a good idea to try to find a portal. There are ways to do that. Okay, here we go. Interesting looking device, huh? Traveler anatomy confirmed. Breach, breach, breach. I approach the portal. I think of every passing thought and idle wish and idle wish that led me to this moment. With this gateway, I might find Artemis. I might find the source of the Sentinels. I might find a whole new universe. But it is more than this. This is not fate. I'm making a choice. A leap of faith that somewhere out there in the dark I will find who I am meant to be. Input the glyphs. I step forward not knowing what I will find on the other side, but I feel it deep in my heart, the call towards a deeper truth. This will be the start of everything. See if this looks familiar to you. Hmm. I wonder where they got that from. I'm gonna leave it alone, but you know what? It's still pretty cool. Okay, we're going to take a leap. Ready for this? Here we go. And where, oh, where will we be? Ominous music in the background. There should be some other noises any moment as it rebuilds the world you're about to appear on. There we go. And we're on another world. Always a strange looking one, right? Where's our ship? No ship. Nothing. Great. So we got aggressive sentinels here as well. And no way to hide from them. But you notice we don't have our ship. Warning, gateway breach detected. Breach, breach, breach. Warning, anomalous signal detected. You hear it? The warning mess noise in the background? Atlas protocol initiated. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. Keep in mind, what is 16, folks, if any of you know? Ooh, here it gets, here it gets creepy. And here we are. This is where we end up. It pulled us into this area. Now, little hint, you probably have figured out who this is. This is Atlas. We're going to be speaking to it. But you know what? We need to learn a few words. And these little white things on the ground here, they teach you some words. There's not a whole lot in the first chamber you go to, but in every subsequent one you get to, run around and grab them. See? Atlas word for Atlas. So you have a fourth language you can learn. But not all of them will teach you words. Some of them have more than others. So just wander around and try to grab as many as you can. A 
Again, there's not many here in this case, and you're probably not going to pick up a whole lot of words in this particular first chamber. I think you can only get two words here. I think Atlas and Traveler, and that's pretty much all you get. Thank heavens for those upgrades, huh? Still didn't get any words, so we picked up just about all of them. There usually is one or two up here. Yeah, there's one up here. I think this is the other one you get it from. There it is, Traveler. Okay, so we got our two words. We're going to head over here. And here's where the graphics get really cool. This is the upgrade. I love this. I really love it. It looks like you're in a different otherworldly area. These things give you something, so go ahead and take them. They give you warp cells. Hey, it's free. Take them. Go up here and you speak to the Atlas interface. The text blinks before me. It awaits input. Now we could say hello or ask who this is. I'm going to say hello. Hello, world, the Atlas says in return. An audio recording plays, echoing out across the vast universe. Interface, pardon me, interface. We were once travelers. We once aspired to more than dirt and dust. The audio clicks. Time passes. Show me a world, Atlas. Show me something no one has ever seen before. So what you're hearing is you're hearing a recording of something. You're hearing a recording of the first traveler. <clears throat> Excuse me. The voice ends. The interface grows silent. Uh, pardon me. Grows still and silent. It awaits a command. So we can perform a diagnostic or we can wipe the system. I don't really recommend wiping the system just yet. You really want to learn more. So let's perform the diagnostic. It has been... Okay, big number again. 1,946,218,921,222,000 of twenty-one years since the last diagnostic. 64% of worlds operating with ex within expected parameters. That's a lot of years. I think they should do a little more maintenance. I don't know about you. 2,611,384 actionable observations awaiting analysis. Subroutine. Sentinel. Status. Error. Null value. So, we seem to have a problem with the Sentinel program. Subroutine. Glass. Status. Operational. 4,182 breach attempts. Interesting. Subroutine. Traveler. Status. Operational. 458 critical error warnings. ExoMind structural integrity compromised. Immediate repairs required. So there's a problem with this particular, dare we say, program. Have you figured it out yet? Initiate personality interface? I'm going to say yes because I like to talk to this thing. Um, I, I hit the Y button. I literally hit Y just now. Let's hit 1. Traveler. Reality fades. Everything does. My body, my voice, my soul, all of it speaks to me. The Atlas stands before me in all its might. I want to ask about Artemis. I want to find them, but something is happening to me. I need to get out of here. I need to... Should we scream, rejoice, or submit? Eh, screaming will get me nowhere. I don't think we should be really rejoicing. Let's just submit for now. I try to submit, but it is too late for that. Far too late. I have belonged to this creature my entire life. Here we go again. Another strange ride. Let's see where we end up this time. The noise is incredible. The sounds they placed in this game. Again, I don't know who designed it, but kind of creepy. Let's see where it deposits us. Deposits us. Same planet, different planet. If I remember correctly, it's a different planet. Ah, restore point saved. Different planet entirely. No idea where in the world I am. First contact. Usually mild, not present. Uh, rare flora and frequent fauna. Okay. Well, hello there. Let's take a look at our inventory here in our exosuit. Looks like everything's okay. No harm, no foul. Multi-tool? 
Okay, we're okay, except for the one thing I need to upgrade still. Okay, good. Um, there's our ship. 480 units away. So... Interesting. Atlas suit initiation. We have a... Machinery here, and as you know, this means that we're going to find some buried technology, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it while I can. It's always useful to grab that when you can. Oh, oh. don't want to attack him. Yeah, ended up with two. I'm going to keep my pulse spitter out just in case. We don't know what kind of animals are here. Oh, what do we got? Uh, stone resonates, producing a sound that fills my mind. A vision begins to take shape. A robotic life form turns towards me. Light steams from their metal shell, forming a glowing fog that surrounds us both. They gesture towards me, accept knowledge. The name Corvax floats in my vision. An echo of the strange vision I just experienced, a word in this alien tongue, is seared into my brain. So we learned our first Corvax word. How nice. Um, creature, where'd you go? I'm going to go ahead and check this out. Biological life form. There's one. Two. How many we got on this planet? Nine. There's a third one. Okay. So like I said, try to get all the creatures because, you know, first of all, it is an achievement. And secondly, you get nanites for it. Oh, what do you know? A flying worm. Okay, so that's five. Let's continue on. We have no idea what else is on this planet. Looks like we've got star bulbs. Okay. A little oxygen over there. I'm going to hold off on that. Let's get to our ship and see what's... Oh, we do have attacking creatures. He's going to hit me. <laughs> hey, nasty guy. Tell you what. Come on back. Where'd you go? There you are. There we go. I'll take that. Hey, what do you know? Two more salvage data. So, does this look familiar to you? Looks like exactly how it looked when we first started, right? Scenario, iteration, not going to bother. Boundary separation, failure likely. Vessel, 16, emptied. Cause, sentinel intervention, deliberate transfer. Very interesting, right? Analysis, fresh iteration generated, anomaly containment prepared. We're going to broadcast like we did before. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly, anomaly detected. Anomalies compliant. Position log. System integrity scan initialized. So we're, it's like exactly the same as it did before. Let's grab things as we can because it's a smart thing to do when you're this early in the game still. Get some nanites out of that. Check out this unit. We're going to get some of this, some of that. I'm not going to bother with the big one right now. Well, we do have some berry tech. Okay, good. And we'll get three out of it. That's nice. And let's get on our ship. So the ship seems to be in okay shape. I escaped my ship glad of something familiar in this strange world. This gets weird. Where has this portal taken me? I was caught in the gravity of that infernal machine, not strong enough to resist. It identified itself as Atlas the entity so many worship and fear. I saw no sign of Artemis, no trace of the Sentinels. Why did I even step through the gateway? Why did I follow this path? So why did we do that? Because we can? Maybe. To kill the Sentinels? I'm already doing that. That's not really it. It was to rescue Artemis. You're on the Artemis storyline. You can choose what you will. I'm going to choose that. Is that true? Or is it just a lie I tell myself? The kind of thought a noble person might have. Artemis was in need of assistance, but did I really risk my life just for them? There is something more, some other yearning. As I stare at the console, an opportunity presents itself once more. There is an inbound transmission emerging from a location on this very planet. 
Okay, so let's check the signal. I'm not taking off yet. You are not alone. Sounds familiar, right? The signal appears to be coming from this very system using the same words that led me to Artemis so long ago. Could it be them? Did Artemis meet the Atlas, as have I? As I have? And the transmission. Okay, now one thing you're going to notice... My launch thrusters are damaged. So whenever you go through something like that, a lot of times you will get damage to a portion of your ship. So I wouldn't have been able to take off even if I wanted to. Fortunately, I have the materials to have built, to have fixed it. So that's it. That's the only thing that got damaged. We're fortunate. So now we can take off. The signal echo is traced. Let's see where we're going. Shouldn't be far. Hey, an archive. What do you know? Oh, how long? Eight seconds? Okay, so this isn't the best planet in the world. We've got creatures that attack us and severe weather. Approximate location. Let's take a look around. I thought I saw something over here. It'll tell us that that's there. My guess is I'm looking for a either a freighter. Oh, there is a freighter over here. Okay, let's land at the freighter. It could be this. Or it's a crashed ship of another type. One of the two. But at least we have a landing pad here. Nope. 500 blocks that way. Uh, let's see, it's a heat storm, so we should be okay. we got plenty of protection. I'll leave my ship here and I'll run into the sides of the ship because I can't see a stinking thing right now. 484 that way. Let's just get a more accurate... Okay, so it should be in this general direction here. My guess is it's probably a crashed ship or just a section that has Hold on a second. Let me land for a second here. Okay, so it's over this way. That's weird. Didn't think I was off by that much. Ah! You see that icon at the top? Well, if you've been watching some of the uh, playthroughs I've been doing as far as the expeditions are concerned, you'll know exactly what this icon is. And I'm about to be attacked again. Whoop, wrong one. Okay. Artemis. I approach the source of the signal. A hologram appears. It is Artemis. But there is only silence. The slow pulse of cosmic noise in the signal. Ask if they're all right. If Artemis can hear me, they make no sign. The hologram just stares. It's strange, but I feel a sense of deja vu. It says, I've been here before, right at this very moment. It's very important. Ask what is wrong. As I move closer, the Artemis projection begins to speak, their words punctuated by a strange static. They came, pss, watched closely, pss, machines, murderers, pss, against the... Pss. The voice falls silent. The projection looks at me, something is very wrong. Scan the hologram. I scan the hologram. It bears the exact same signature as every other transmission I've received from Artemis. There is no ulterior source for the signal. Everything they have said appears to have come from right in front of me. As I stand here, Artemis begins to speak. Where are called them, but still beloved, anomaly, they not a polo watching us tracking. Mistake. Abandoned. It, what it wasn't through the portal. Please don't trust. I'm afraid. Aren't? I'm going to comfort him. The projection fizzles away to mere static. The echo is all that is left of the entity known as Artemis. A grave of glitch data trapped in a sunless reality. My friend is dead. Perhaps they were never alive. I must tell Apollo what I've seen. Pretty deep. So we got to contact Apollo at a terminal, and that's our next stage. So we're going to continue with this. I'm going to go check out the freighter real quick. For you, it's going to appear like I'm going to just pick up right exactly at the next stage of this whole scenario. But I'm going to go ahead and see what I can get from the freighter, because hey, you know, that's what you do. Okay, guys, see you in a moment. Okay, we're back. 
got a couple hypercores out of that, so at least that was worthy of my time. Uh, so we're going to scan. Let's see what we end up with. Hollow terminus detected, of course. It's over that way. Ten seconds away. Okay, good. This time it gave me the closest one rather than one on another planet. Oh, great. Let's see. Oh, must be this one. Although I've had that happen to me before. Let's just see if the icon appears when I get out. It did. Okay, so we're in the right place. And we have supercharged jetpacks now, so we should be able to get up to the top without having to climb ladders. Excellent. Warning. Network compromised. Warning. Manual override required. There is no signal. There are no signal matches for Artemis or Apollo. This is important. The terminal is a stream of warnings and errors. Perform a manual override. The warning message cease. messages cease. Some new frequency shimmers into being. Gee, I wonder who we got. Break, break, break. Data stream overridden. Why, who's here? No. Who have we met? You are not alone. Does that sound familiar? That's where all those messages have been coming from. But who is Null? Tell me. What's the point of, in living if we know that life will finish? So we can ask who they are. We can suggest death does not erase life. We suggest that we improve the lives of others or that we don't know. Now, in real life, I think we improve the lives of others. Uh, in this game, death does not erase life, as you'll learn. But I really like to see what happens when I ask who they are. Because that's, that's the only time I've ever asked this question. So let's see what happens. Ask who they are. You refuse to answer? That's answer enough, I suppose. I know you, traveler. I know where you've been. I know where you're going. What if I told you that Artemis could be saved? What if I told you that Artemis could live once more, after a fashion? What would you do then, I wonder? Should I demand to know who they are? Should I say I would do it, or that would need to know more? Now, I've done the would you do it, I would do it. I've also said, I have gone through the say you would need to know more. I'm going to demand to know who they are. Let's see if he answers this time. I am nothing. Well, if you look up the definition of null, that's what it is. The blood of Artemis is data. The heart, it's glitch. I can help you retrieve them both. We require a mind arc, a receptacle for their soul. Can you do that for me? I am reactivating Artemis's frequency. Speak with them when you are ready. The stranger offers me blueprints for something they call the mind arc, a device they claim will allow me to restore Artemis to life. We're going to accept it. I accept not knowing who the stranger is or how they possess such knowledge of my adventures, but if there is a chance that I can help Artemis, I will take it. Okay. So think about this guy for just a second. And you notice that this hasn't, this whole hollow terminus hasn't dropped out yet. Okay? But think about this fellow for a second. He had the power to stop Artemis' signal. He had the power to reinsert Artemis' signal. Is he the Atlas? No. Well, who can he be? We only know of one of the storyline that we've been reading about so far. Have you figured it out yet? Let's talk to Artemis. This is going to be weird. Are you... Are you... Are you... Artemis repeats these two words endlessly. Unable to see my face or hear my voice. I must craft the mind arc before I can help them further. Leave. Now see, this thing hasn't dropped out yet. But we do have to get the mind arc. Nothing and no one else is appearing, so we know exactly what we need to do. We need to upgrade our hyperdrive so we can locate cadmium. So we should now have the ability to install. Yep, we have the upgraded drive. <clears throat> so I'm gonna build that. Yeah, I'll put it on this side. The cadmium drive right here. We need chromatic metal and three wiring looms, which we have plenty of, as you know. Now we have a cadmium drive, which allows us to go to red stellar bodies. So in other words, red red suns. Okay, so we're in good shape. Time to go. Where's our ship? Ship over here, I think. No, it's over here. Down there. There it is. We'll take the short way.
Okay. So we need to go to a red planet and get some cadmium. So that's our next step. So we're getting to the end of the last 15 minutes of our video here. So we're going to go to the red planet. Hyperdrive should have plenty of charge in it right now. Now it's showing us another Atlas station. Okay. But that's not what we're doing right now. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you have to change your mission. So we're going to right click. We're going to change to, well, it says Atlas Station. It doesn't look like we can choose anything different, but you'll notice that this has an Atlas symbol appearing. So this is a red planet. And this is where we're going. You notice that the data available is unavailable, which means there is no space station here. So no safety zone. But usually means that since there's that, there'll probably be no uh, pirates, nobody to attack us. There might be sentinels still, of course. But we're going to go ahead and harvest some cadmium. And here we are. Now, we would have appeared where there would be a space station. As you know, space stations are close to planets. Look, a planet. Let's scan it. Cadmium. Stellar corruption. Okay, so this is a planet in bad shape. We're going to try to go to a lighter area. It looks like there's water out that way, so I kind of want to stay away from that area. Because I need to find elements. So we're going to go to a more of a lit up area. I don't know if we're sunrise or sunset on this side. We're heading south, but who knows. Looks like it might be getting darker. But we'll see. So cadmium is red. So you're looking for an element on the ground that'll be red looking. Let's see. Let's see if anything appears. And of course blips on the top of the screen will show up as the icon for these kind of things on the ground, for minerals on the ground. So I think we're close enough and I think the everything's building in. What an unusual looking planet. Not the right kind of planet to want, that you want to travel heavily on. Hmm. Water. Or let's just call it a liquid substance anyway. Okay. Scan one more time. We're not going to find any settlements here. We possibly could find some crashed ships, but it's going to be few and far between. Because it's an uncharted and un... Uh, not the type of station, uh, system you're going to find such things on. Let's find a level area to land on. I think over there looks pretty good. Yeah, top of this little hillock here would do just fine. Eh, well, not quite the top, but that's okay. Uh, let me see. Weather. Flaming hail. Oh, that sounds like fun. All right. Salt deposit. I don't even see a deposit there. Uh, anomalous planets don't usually have a whole lot of creatures on them. But this one appears to have plenty of creatures on it for some reason. Just going to see how many we've got. Twelve? Okay, then. Well, I'm not going to worry about trying to find all of them. Uh, so we need to find some deposits. Ah, here's some. Okay, phosphorus, phosphorus, salt, phosphorus, cadmium, finally. Oh, it looks like it's pretty close by. I wonder if it's a real deposit. Looks like there's a little bit showing through the surface over here. Okay, terrain manipulator. Uh, maybe not. Oh, no, okay, there it is. So we'll need 250 to build ourselves the next drive. So let's... Make this tiny and see how much we can get out of this little teeny tiny deposit here. Maybe it's bigger under the ground, but probably not. So it looks like we're going to have to find another one. Hmm. Doesn't go too, too deep in that direction anyway. Yeah, this was not a very big deposit at all. Okay. 
Let's see how much we got. 154. We need a lot more than that. Granted, it's saying we have enough right now, but we definitely going to want more of that for future reference. I think I have some of my cargo container back at my main base, but good grief. There's like nothing around here. I could get some salt while I'm here. You know what, what money we can find on that. Let's just head out a little ways. Uh, where's my ship at? It should be up there. Let's just find one more deposit, and I'll be back with you guys in just a moment. And we're back. And as you can see, we got these weird creatures floating around on here. Talk about anomalous. That's kind of crazy looking. All right, we found another deposit. We're going to see what we can get out of this one. Again, I want at least 250. I'd like to get about 300 if I can. This is not a very clean deposit. We're getting a lot of silicon out of it as well, silicon powder. So it's a dirty deposit, but it should get us what we need. Kind of a marbleized deposit, I guess, is the way I would look at this. But again, it should get us what we need. We should get about, uh, all total, about 300 out of, out of all of this. We just, we want it for later. There's upgrades that you can put on your ship and stuff like that that you're going to want this for. And granted, you could always come back. Uh, that's weird. Wanted me to upgrade everything else rather than the thing that I'm actually got in my hand and I'm using right now. Weird. Okay, let's see about how much I've got here. 450. I think we're good there. Let's make it around 500. Excuse me. Sorry. Pardon me. That should be it. Let's see. 509. Okay, we're good. Now, the next thing it says, you notice it says I have to harvest a living pearl. So, fortunately, this planet has water. Let's look at the surrounding. Looks like we have a living pearl right there. So let's head over there. I probably again have one in inventory or something like that, but go for a dip. Uh, we need our mining beam. Do we want to get extras? Why not? Don't get too close. There we go. Then we got four. That's good. Let's head back to our ship. I mean, we could... Hey, look at that. Don't see too many of those abyssal horrors floating around. Let's go ahead and scan these guys. That's three. Okay. We're good. I don't see anything else around here. So, should we get the Abyssal Horror while we're at it? There we go. Because those eyeballs are worth something. See? 57,000 just for an eyeball. If you can see what I mean. Uh, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Okay, so we got our Living Pearl, and we got our Cadmium. So we're supposed to build something. That would be the metal plating. we got to get three metal plates, it says. One, two. Oop. Stop that. One, two, three. Okay, good. And now we can construct a Mind Arc. Oh, Soul Engine first. Uh, so what do we need to make an art mind arc? We need glass. So how do we get glass? Remember? Let's put some silicate powder in here. We only need one. And there we go. And 
we already had two to begin with. So now we should be able to construct a mind arc. And there it is. So we're all set. So we're going to keep that here in our inventory. Let's go see what we're doing with Artemis. With five minutes left. So waiting for the next stage of our journey to pop up on our screen. Mission targets and other systems. So we got to consult the galaxy map. Let's head out. You pretty much know where we're going. We're probably going to go back to our home system here. All right, where to? Looks like it's back to our home system. Now this uh, episode may run a few minutes over because we're going to complete one extra step on this storyline. Okay, we're back. And that's where we're headed. It says first contact. I guess this is a different system. I'm going to return to the hollow terminus to speak to Artemis. Okay. And there we go. This time we'll stay up a little higher. It seems to know exactly where it is. It doesn't say approximate location this time, so it's giving us the exact location for this little uh, device. Here we go. For this building. Yep, sure enough. And here we go. Austinus. Interesting name. Okay. All the terminus activated. Multiple signal sources available. The tower hosts a powerful transmitter designed to facilitate holographic communication across long distances. We're going to tune in Artemis. And... Oof. Uh, right through my shoulder. And there he is. Still repeating himself. I attempt to comfort Artemis, telling him, telling them that everything will be alright. I hate when that happens. Sorry about that. They turn to me with a wild look of panic, clearly not expecting my voice. Who is that? Who? Identify yourself. I tell Artemis I am their friend, that I could not find them within the portal, but that I have found a way to restore them. I, I didn't think you would come back. Why is that? You never gave up, did you? All these years. You starting to figure something out here, folks? Ask what Artemis means. I've, I've been here for 20 years, waiting for you to... You were going to find my star chart, weren't you? Claim that we'll be safe soon. Who is that? Who, who's there? Artemis repeats their words again, our conversation all but forgotten. They stare at me, their eyes pained, their mind trapped in an endless loop. They appear to have spent twenty years in this pseudo-death, haunted by loneliness and fear. If the stranger's device works, perhaps I can help Artemis move on. Use the mind arc. I activate the mind arc. I do not know what to expect, some show of light and fury, some catharsis where Artemis emerges in the flesh, restored, uh, emerges, emerges in the flesh, restored to life before my eyes, but it is not to be. One moment I see their hologram and the next there is nothing. The stranger who gave me these blueprints beckons me over, their signal still activate, active. Twenty years have passed since you went through the portal. So that portal trip to the Atlas and back again, 20 years went by. Mind-blowing. Let's talk to Null. Travelers are a dream, an idea that we have some special place in this universe. Artemis had it. You had it. Apollo, too, though they would conceal it. Even I had this dream long ago. Hint. We are countless, my friend. Walking these worlds, yearning for friendship. No one wants to be alone. Not truly. But the closer you get to others, the more you risk hurting yourself. 
hurting them. The deepest secret in the universe is not that of the glass or the aerons or the progenitors. It is the final, it is that final act, the decision to abandon those who need you. It is the primal sin, the foundation of existence itself. Go to the stars, traveler. Your friends await your friends wait for you. They will help you bring peace to poor Artemis. Return when you are finished. We have much to discuss. Leave. The friends he's talking about is of course uh the anomaly and it's not on pole. Not on pole and uh, polo. So it tells us to bring it there, and that's what we're gonna finish at. We're finished at this particular moment, so you can see the ending of the not quite Artemis storyline, but it is sort of the Artemis storyline. I just realized I left some uh, buried technology there. Oh well. So we're gonna bring the anomaly in, and let's take a ride. Again, multiplayer is turned off. So we shouldn't see anybody in here. Nope, good. All these parking spaces, you had to park all the way out here. Sound like my wife. What'd you park here for? Hmm, indeed. And we're in. So we're going to talk to Nada first, not Polo. Friend Entity, Polo observed your signal approach, but it was anomalous. The signature was from the wrong time. Are you well? Not incomplete? Not fading? Nada's visor light flares, burning with concern and distress. Reassure them. I tell Nada that I am well. My condition has not changed since I emerged from the portal. Nada relaxes, but a question still hangs in the air. I tell them about Artemis, about Null, and about the Mind Arc. The vessel glows brightly as I reveal it. It is Echo. I... I never thought to see a traveler's soul. You are so beautiful. But, friend entity, this Artemis Echo is in pain. Disconnected. This Ark is no rescue. Ask why. Artemis Echo will never have body again. Will never explore again. Old life gone. But we can help them. Nada has a machine. No, not machine. It is something living. A refuge. There is a choice. You may upload Artemis Echo to machine, to sub-simulation where they may live on, or help Artemis Echo end suffering. Let's ask about the simulation first. I ask what life would be like inside the simula of this simulation. Nada pauses for a moment, staring at me strangely. Nada tells me Artemis would still feel joy at the things they experienced, but if they should learn of their fate, that they were alone, no longer real, unable to meet their friends. Such knowledge may cause them great pain. You must choose, upload them to machine, to sub-simulation where they may live on, or help Artemis Echo end suffering. So we already asked about the simulation, Ask if there is another way. Nada shakes this, their head strangely, trying to adopt my own mannerisms. The gesture is appreciated, if disconcerting. You must choose. Upload them to a machine, to subsimulation where they may live on or help Artemis Echo end suffering. So we've already asked these things. So we've decided. What have we decided? I haven't yet. Let's see. Go and speak with Go and speak with Polo Traveler. They will help you calibrate the machines no matter what your decision. Leave. Whatever you do, I am proud of your compassion. You are Traveler Friend. Nada told me what you need to do. Just know, friend, that we support you, no matter the choice. I will prepare the machine. It is not a friend's private refuge. Please treat it with care. Leave. Okay. So, we have a choice to make as we wander over here to this unit. The choice is, do we upload this Artemis soul into, and I'm using the word soul very lightly, Artemis soul into this machine, which is a Corvax simulation terminal, or do we let him go? It's tough. Um, having the life experiences that we have, 
and this gets a little bit philosophical, so I apologize, and you can take this or not as the case may be. Having the life experiences that we have, sometimes we may want to prolong things rather than let them end. We understand that because we have, uh, as a believer in what I believe in, um, deep in our hearts and our minds, we have infinity in our minds and hearts, the, the desire to live forever. So keeping in mind one, ladies and gentlemen, this is a game. It is only a game. This is not real life. Number two, if you've learned something so far in this game, this character is learning more and more about the universe in which he lives in. He has learned that there was a beginning to this universe. He's learned that there is an entity, we believe it to be Null, who was the first traveler and has prolonged himself for what appears to be a very, very long time, possibly millions of years. But has he seen everything? We don't know. Thirdly, he's trying to help us, or not as the case may be, in deciding Artemis's fate. Artemis is an entity. Now I could go to this machine and upload Artemis into this terminal. How do you upload a soul into a machine? Well, an ent the, 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 the point being is that we are learning the fact that these are not real beings. And this creature you see before you, this entity that I'm part of, is not a real creature. So what are we doing? It's uploading a program into a machine. Do we want to decide that? But what are we? Is this a true entity? And if you go by the game, if you immerse yourself into the game, the point being is, do we want to prolong the fate of Ar Artemis? Do we want to prolong what we do? Do we want to continue the lie? I'm going to do something in this case that I've done in the past. I've gone both ways with it. I've, I've, I've extended it and I haven't in, a, in this case. But in our case, I'm going to end it. The machine is ancient and powerful, a relic of a world long since destroyed. The craft is extraordinary. It is clearly tended to often and with great love. I feel the whisper, not as faint hum over the speaker as they commune with the machine. The words on, pa the words on panel unscramble themselves. Nada, entity authorization detected, secondary simulation, right enabled. You can see this is a machine, folks. This relic is a simulation of a solar system, a prayer offered by ancient Corvax to the Atlas, now reshaped at the heart of the anomaly. A single false solar system so dear to Nada. It will act as a home for Artemis, should I wish it. So again, it's trying to manipulate you into doing what you wish to do. If, you, if you're playing the main storyline, folks, it is completely up to you how you want to end this. I'm going to allow Artemis to die. I'm not going to upload it. I don't see the reason to prolong the pain of a fig figurative creature. So, allow Artemis to die is my choice. Even as I process my decision, not as hum takes on a quiet new intensity, I speak and their voices reply, and their voice replies, intelligible now. They talk gently and suggest I place the Ark upon the terminal. I do so, and hear a whisper. A prayer? The Ark begins to unfold, twisting from its center, releasing the traveler's soul within. I witness a spark of blue light blaze within the air before me. It fades after a moment, and with it, the last remnant of Artemis within this world. Leave. I hear Nada's voice over the speaker, intelligible now and reassuring. They tell me that it is done. Artemis is at peace now. They suggest I do not dwell on these moments. They tell me that I did the right thing. There's not much else to say in this kind of a matter, so again, you can deal with it as you wish, as you determine. So I'm going to speak to Nada and Polo real quick. Artemis Echo has been disconnected, freed from a cruel life. You have done well, Traveler. Your guilt, it is a sacrifice for the one you called friend. Go on without regrets. And then Polo. You did what you had to do, friend. Traveler Artemis is free of pain now. Few can say the same. So they kind of support you and back you up on this, so to speak. Now, had you chosen to six, to save the life of Artemis, per se, and put him in the simulation, a lot more dialogue would have ensued in regards to speaking with Artemis and talking to them, and they would not have known they were in a simulation. But where are we? 
So I'm going to end this episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. I'll leave you with your own thoughts on this matter. And we'll pick up where we left off. I might have a couple episodes come out with dealing with the bases as well. Uh, and again, I hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far. If you liked the episode, by all means, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to subscribe, if you haven't already, again, I really appreciate if you would. Thank you very much. Again, always be kind where you can. And always be truthful in all things, especially to yourself. Take care.